White Holes A white hole is the time-reverse solution of a black hole in general relativity. Where a black hole has an event horizon that nothing can escape, a white hole would have an event horizon that nothing can enter. The outside spacetime would still be curved, but all physical trajectories would be directed outward at the horizon, so matter and light could only emerge. In Einstein's equations, the maximally extended Schwarzschild geometry contains four regions, an exterior universe like ours, a black hole interior, a separate exterior universe, and a white hole interior. The white hole region appears when you extend the mathematics to include past, not just future, evolution. This is a statement about allowed geometries in the theory, not a proof that nature actually realizes them. Formation is the central obstacle. Black holes can form from stellar collapse, which is a causal future process. A white hole would require fine-tuned initial data in the distant past so that an event horizon already exists that only emits. Any small disturbance in that past would feed matter toward the horizon and, under time reversal, destroys the white hole state. This sensitivity implies extreme classical instability. Thermodynamics raises a further problem. Black holes carry Bekenstein-Hawking entropy proportional to horizon area and emit Hawking radiation, which is consistent with the second law of thermodynamics. The naive time reverse would be an object that absorbs negative energy flux and decreases entropy, which conflicts with the second law in ordinary circumstances. Reconciling a persistent white hole with thermodynamics requires exotic states of quantum fields that are not expected in nature. Quantum gravity proposals attempt to salvage white hole-like behavior without the classical pathologies. In loop quantum gravity models, extremely high curvature inside a black hole can trigger a quantum bounce that converts the interior into a short-lived white hole, sometimes called a Planck star. To an external observer, this conversion could take an astronomically long duration because extreme time dilation stretches the process, while the proper time for infalling matter remains comparatively short. These scenarios aim to release information and mass gradually, potentially addressing the information loss problem. But they depend on dynamics beyond established physics. Observationally, no white hole has been confirmed. Some speculative ideas connect sudden energetic outbursts, such as fast radio bursts or short gamma-ray transients, to white hole-like emissions, but standard astrophysical explanations account for the data more economically. A persistent, continuously erupting white hole would produce a distinct and repeatable signature across wavelengths. Surveys have not found such a source. The notion that the Big Bang was a white hole captures the idea of a past boundary that emits everything, but it is not precise. The Big Bang describes the origin of space-time itself in a homogeneous and isotropic solution, not an explosion within a pre-existing ambient space. A white hole is localized with an exterior region it emits into, whereas the early universe had no such outside. Any formal identification requires additional assumptions that change the standard cosmological model. Wormholes A wormhole is a hypothetical tunnel in space-time that directly connects two separate regions. In general relativity, one of the earliest models appears when a black hole and a white hole are mathematically connected. This structure is called an Einstein-Rosen bridge. The geometry looks like two funnels with their narrow throats joined, linking either two distant locations in the same universe or two completely separate universes. The Einstein-Rosen bridge solution is not traversable in its original form. The throat connecting the two ends pinches off too quickly for any light or matter to pass through from one side to the other. This is because the geometry is unstable. The connection closes faster than signals can travel. To make a wormhole traversable, additional elements are required that go beyond classical general relativity. The main requirement is so-called exotic matter. Exotic matter refers to a state of energy density that is negative relative to normal vacuum. Negative energy bends space-time in the opposite way from positive mass. And in principle, it can hold a wormhole throat open. In quantum field theory, tiny amounts of negative energy can exist in effects like the Casimir effect between closely spaced plates. But producing macroscopic, sustained negative energy in astrophysical amounts has no known mechanism. Several models have explored how wormholes could, in theory, be stabilized. Kip Thorne and Michael Morris described a traversable wormhole metric in the 1980s that explicitly required exotic matter. 
This led to popular interest because the geometry allowed round-trip travel between distant points in less time than light would take through normal space. In that sense, a wormhole functions as a shortcut through space-time, though not as a literal faster-than-light drive. Causality is another difficulty. A wormhole that connects two points can also act as a time machine if one mouth is accelerated relative to the other. Time dilation shifts the clocks at the two mouths, so moving through the wormhole could deliver an object to its own past. This raises paradoxes such as the grandfather paradox, where consistency of history is called into question. Some physicists argue that quantum effects or chronology protection mechanisms would prevent stable time loops from forming. In string theory and holographic approaches, wormholes appear in more abstract forms. The ADS CFT correspondence links certain wormhole geometries in anti-DE sitter space to entanglement patterns in a conformal field theory. In this picture, wormholes are not literal tunnels you can fly through but mathematical reflections of deep connections between quantum information and geometry. This is often summarized by the slogan ER equals EPR, which proposes a relationship between Einstein-Rosen bridges and entangled particle pairs. Observational evidence for wormholes is absent. However, some proposals suggest that if a wormhole existed with a mass similar to a black hole, the way it bends light or its gravitational lensing pattern could be slightly different. For example, the photon sphere or accretion disk structure might display anomalies compared to a normal black hole. Upcoming very long baseline interferometry observations may eventually be sensitive enough to test such exotic signatures. Holographic Principle The holographic principle is the idea that all the information contained within a volume of space can be fully described by information stored on its boundary surface. This principle grew out of attempts to understand black hole thermodynamics. Jacob Bekenstein showed in the 1970s that the entropy of a black hole is proportional not to its volume but to the area of its event horizon. Stephen Hawking's calculation of Hawking radiation confirmed that black holes have a temperature and entropy that scales with area. This area law is unusual. In ordinary thermodynamics, entropy usually scales with volume. For example, if you double the size of a gas-filled box, you double the entropy, since you doubled the number of microscopic arrangements of the particles. But for a black hole, doubling the radius increases the horizon area by 4, while the enclosed volume grows by 8. The entropy grows with the surface area, not the volume, which suggests that the fundamental degrees of freedom of space-time are encoded on a two-dimensional surface. Gerard Hooft and Leonard Susskind in the 1990s proposed the holographic principle as a general statement. The physics of a region of space can be fully represented by information on its boundary. The analogy is with a hologram, a two-dimensional sheet that encodes a three-dimensional image. In the holographic view, our three-dimensional world could be a projection from fundamental data stored on a distant two-dimensional surface. The most concrete realization is the ADS, CFT correspondence proposed by Juan Maldacena in 1997. It equates a gravitational theory in a five-dimensional anti-D sitter space-time with a four-dimensional conformal field theory on its boundary. This duality shows explicitly how bulk gravity physics, including black holes, can be reconstructed from boundary quantum information. Although our universe is not anti-D sitter, the correspondence provides a powerful tool for exploring quantum gravity. The holographic principle also connects to the black hole information paradox. If black holes completely destroyed information, quantum mechanics would be violated. But if the holographic principle is correct, the information is not lost but encoded in subtle correlations on the horizon and eventually released with Hawking radiation. This interpretation preserves unitarity, a core principle of quantum theory, while respecting the thermodynamic properties of black holes. Tests of the holographic principle are indirect. Some calculations of strongly interacting quantum systems, such as quark-gluon plasma, use holographic methods to derive properties that match experimental results at particle colliders. Cosmologists also explore whether holographic models can explain the large-scale structure of the universe. Direct verification remains out of reach, but the principle has become a guiding framework in theoretical physics for unifying quantum mechanics and gravity. Firewall Paradox The firewall paradox arises when different principles of physics are applied to black holes and appear to contradict each other. 
The starting point is the black hole information paradox. Quantum mechanics requires that information is never lost, while Hawking's original calculation suggested that black holes evaporate into purely thermal radiation with no trace of the infalling matter. The holographic principle and related ideas suggest that information must in fact be preserved and encoded in the outgoing radiation. In 2012, a group of physicists, Almheri, Merolf, Polchinski, and Sully, often abbreviated as AMPS, showed that combining these requirements leads to a sharp conflict. Consider a black hole that has already radiated away at least half of its entropy. The outgoing Hawking radiation is entangled with earlier radiation to preserve information. At the same time, according to general relativity and quantum field theory, a freely falling observer crossing the event horizon should experience nothing unusual due to the equivalence principle. For this to hold, the radiation just outside the horizon must be entangled with interior modes. Quantum mechanics, however, enforces the monogamy of entanglement. A quantum system cannot be fully entangled with two independent partners at once. The outgoing Hawking particle cannot be maximally entangled both with earlier radiation and with its interior partner. This contradiction suggests that one of the assumptions must fail. The AMPS proposal was that the equivalence principle breaks down at the horizon. Instead of empty space, the horizon would be a zone of extremely high energy quanta, a firewall. Any object falling in would be incinerated instantly at the boundary, rather than passing smoothly through. This preserves unitarity and information conservation, but at the cost of destroying the principle that locally, physics near a small region of space-time looks like special relativity. Alternative resolutions aim to avoid firewalls. One idea is black hole complementarity, which holds that the interior description and the exterior description are not simultaneously accessible. Another approach is ER equals EPR, suggesting that entanglement itself is a geometric connection. And the duplication of entanglement is not a paradox, but a reflection of hidden wormhole structure. Other proposals involve modifications to quantum mechanics, non-local interactions, or new structures at the horizon, such as fuzzballs and string theory. The firewall paradox remains unresolved. It highlights the tension between general relativity, quantum mechanics, and thermodynamics, and shows that a complete theory of quantum gravity must eventually clarify what happens at the horizon of an old black hole. Fuzzballs The fuzzball proposal is a string theory-based alternative to the classical black hole picture. In standard general relativity, a black hole is defined by just a few parameters, mass, charge, and spin. This no-hair property means that all the complex details of the matter that collapse to form the black hole are hidden inside the horizon and lost to outside observers. The fuzzball idea challenges this by saying that every black hole microstate actually has a distinct structure that extends to the horizon scale. In string theory, Fundamental objects are one-dimensional strings and higher-dimensional brains. A black hole can be described as a bound state of many such strings and brains. Each specific arrangement corresponds to a different quantum state. When physicists computed the entropy of certain highly symmetric black holes in the mid-1990s, they found that the number of distinct string-brain configurations matched exactly the entropy predicted by Bekenstein and Hawking. This was the first major hint that fuzzballs might be the true microscopic description. According to the fuzzball proposal, there is no empty space inside the horizon, and no singularity at the center. Instead, the entire region is filled with tangled strings and brains forming a fuzzy object roughly the size of the horizon radius. This eliminates the paradox of information loss because Hawking radiation can be emitted directly from the fuzzball surface. Instead of being perfectly thermal, the radiation can carry subtle correlations that encode the information about the state of the fuzzball. One striking implication is that an infalling observer would not experience the smooth passage through an event horizon that general relativity predicts. Instead, the observer would encounter quantum structure immediately at the horizon scale, similar in spirit to the firewall idea, but motivated by string theory. A major challenge is that explicit fuzzball solutions have only been constructed for special supersymmetric black holes, not for astrophysical ones like those seen by LIGO or the Event Horizon Telescope. Testing the fuzzball idea requires extending string theory techniques to more realistic cases. Gravistars A gravistar, or gravitational vacuum star, is designed to avoid both singularities and event horizons. The model, 
proposed by Powell Mazur and Emil Motola in 2001, replaces the black hole interior with a new state of matter energy. Specifically, the interior is a patch of space-time, dominated by vacuum energy with negative pressure. Similar to the cosmological constant that drives cosmic acceleration, this interior is matched to the exterior vacuum solution by a thin, ultra-dense shell of ordinary matter or exotic states. The negative pressure inside acts as a repulsive force, counterbalancing the pull of gravity. This halts collapse before a singularity can form, because there is no event horizon. Light and information are not permanently trapped. Instead, signals can be delayed by large gravitational redshifts but eventually can escape. From the outside, a gravistar can mimic many of the observational features of a black hole. Compactness, strong gravitational lensing, and high redshift emission. However, certain signatures could distinguish them. For example, when two compact objects merge, the presence or absence of a true horizon changes the gravitational wave signal. A gravistar's hard surface could produce echoes, reflected waves that arrive after the main merger signal. Detecting such echoes is extremely difficult, and current searches in LIGO-Virgo data have yielded inconclusive results. The gravistar idea is appealing because it sidesteps the information paradox entirely. If there is no horizon, then information is never lost, just stored, and possibly released later. However, the theory requires exotic states of matter and a very sharp phase transition in space-time structure, which lacks independent experimental support. Planck stars The Planck star is an idea from loop quantum gravity, where space-time itself is quantized at the smallest scales. In this theory, space-time geometry is made up of discrete loops and continuous collapse to a point-like singularity is forbidden. When a collapsing star reaches Planck scale density, quantum gravity effects create a repulsive pressure that halts further collapse and causes a bounce. The result is a Planck star, a dense core held up by quantum gravity. From the point of view of someone falling in, the bounce happens in a very short time, possibly milliseconds. But due to the extreme gravitational time dilation near the horizon, an external observer sees the process stretched across astronomical timescales. A Planck star might appear to be a normal black hole for billions or even trillions of years before the bounce becomes visible. Eventually, the black hole would explode, releasing its contents. This provides a natural resolution to the information paradox. Matter and information that fell in are not lost but compressed into the Planck star and eventually released back out when the black hole evaporates. The process also sets a maximum lifetime for black holes. Once they shrink to Planck scale, they explode. Some researchers have proposed that unexplained astrophysical phenomena, such as fast radio bursts or very short gamma-ray flashes, could be signatures of such final Planck star explosions. Planck stars also imply that the universe may be filled with long-lived black holes that are actually temporary. They would look like normal black holes for most of their history, but would one day erupt in a burst. Observational confirmation is lacking but the model ties directly into attempts to unify general relativity and quantum mechanics. Black holes are insane. Watch this video about black holes type next.